Good evening and welcome to this uh, part 2 of how to avoid writing loops in R. So last time I showed you how you could use the map function to avoid writing loops. So map allows you to repeat a function um, over and over again over, over a list of elements. So your function could take as an input whatever and it could work over a list of all these inputs. So this time I'm going to show you another function that is useful very common in uh, the functional programming paradigm that also helps you avoid writing loops. So as an example, let's take the first 100 digits or uh, rather the first 100 integers. So if I want to sum them, I could of course just use the sum function and this gives me 5050 as the result, okay? However, imagine that uh, this function is not available, or rather imagine that I need to write my own function to operate over a list of vectors, right? I want to combine all the elements into one single result. This is what sum does. It takes all the elements of vector and it operates uh, over them to produce this result. So imagine that sum does not exist. So you could write a loop to solve this problem. You could write a loop to, to do that, but I will uh, do it the functional way. So I will define, oops, I was on the wrong layer. I will define the function that just adds two elements, right? Let's test it. So it should work, but you never know. So it did work, so that's great. Now uh, imagine that uh, I need to use this function to sum all the elements of my numbers vector. So the way to do that in a functional way is to use a function called reduce. Reduce, which is part of per, and actually there is a reduce in base r. Let's let's also try that one, but first let me show the one from per. It just takes numbers and then your function and it gives you the same result as before. So if we also want to use um, the, the version from base R, I think, yeah, first it takes the function and then it takes the list of elements. But what, what is it doing? So I think to understand what this is doing, the best way is to actually use accumulate, which is another function from per. And if you look at the results from accumulate, what you're going to see is that, first of all, it outputs a lot of numbers. And, and second of all, the last element of uh, this result, I'm going to... <coughs> Ooh, sorry about that. I hope it's not Corona. So the last element of this is the result you were expecting. However, what Accumulate shows you, all these are the intermediary steps to reach this result. So 1 is actually the first element of numbers, which is 1, added to 0. So 0 is the initial value that Accumulate and Reduce use by default. Then this result gets added to 2, which is the second element of numbers, which gives 3. 3 gets added to third element of numbers, which is 3, gives you 6, and 6 gets added to the fourth element, which is 4, gives you 10, and so on. Then 10 plus 5, 21, then you add 7, 28, you add 9, uh, you add 8, sorry, you add 9, you add 10, etc, etc, etc. So it's really, it's really, really nice to illustrate what is going on. Reduce, whether it's the base version or the version from Per, gives you this result at the end. Now what you really have to understand is that reduce does not care at all what is the vector you give it and what is add. What reduce, what reduce wants is that add works on a pair of elements. So add needs to do something with a and b. a and b can be anything. In this case they're integers, they could be data frames, they could be models, they could be whatever you need them to be. Reduce does not care. What reduce then is going to do, it's going to do this thing. That's it. It's as simple as that. 
And this is what makes this uh, functional programming paradigm so useful. You just need to focus and work on the most simple case. So your function will work here, in this case, on over two elements. And then you can use reduce to do what you need. Or, of course, you could also uh, use map if you need it to uh, repeat the instruction over and over and over again. The only uh, reason to still use loops after knowing about reduce and map is if you need to do something recursive, because um, R is not optimized to work with recursive functions. It's going to be quite slow, and it's going to use up all your memory. Um, so if you need to do something that is recursive, in this case, it's better to use loops instead of using recursive functions or to try to do something with map uh, or, or reduce and it's honestly it's not going to be much, much easier actually. Um, so there is another function uh, that I want to show you also from Perl, which is called map2. So there's map, map2, and then there's pmap, which is a generalization of map2. And let me take the opportunity of, of having um, so um, yeah let me take the opportunity of having numbers so I'm going to use numbers twice and I'm going to use add it should work let's try it yeah so what did it what what does map two do so it's it's a, again it replaces a for loop but this time you have two vectors and one function and you see it gives you as a result a list of 100 elements. The 100th is 200, which is 100 plus 100. This one is 99 plus 99. This one is 98 plus 98. So what map2 does, it applies your, your function, add in this case, to each element of your both your vectors, one after the next. Right? So we could replace uh, add. This is another trick. We don't need to define add actually because we already have the plus function. So because plus is a bit special, you need to use the backticks if you want to use it in such context. But uh, you can do it. You can do it, and uh, you could also replace uh, plus. Uh, you could replace plus by the multiplication, and you would have one times one, two times two, three times three, and so on. You could also, uh, if you want to compute the factorial, maybe not of 100, uh, 100 because that's going to explode, but you could compute the factorial of 5, for example, using, using reduce very easily. Uh, yes, uh, 120. There is a factorial uh, function, of course, in R. So you could also use that, of course, and you should actually use whenever you have um, functions that exist by default. It's much better to use those functions than to write your own. But as you see, this takes the first element. So in, in this case, um, reduce is smart enough to not use zero as uh, the, um, the initial value. But you could uh, really, if you want to be on the safe side, you could use 1 as the initial value, or you could use maybe 6 as the initial value, which would give you then here the factorial of 6, actually, because it would do 6 times 1, then 6 times 2, 12, then 12 times 3, and so on. So functional programming with uh, R is really really interesting it's really something that I, I really use a lot I've been using that for some, quite some time now it's a paradigm that I think if you have a more uh, if you don't have a, like, like I don't have a computer science background but I have um, a background in econometrics mm -hmm. and in mathematics so if you have a background like that I think the functional programming paradigm works much much better speaks much more to you because at least the way I was taught to think about problems like that was really in terms of functions, you know, maximizing the utility in economics, maximizing functions, optimization problems, maximizing the likelihood for statistics. So this is really how you approach problems. In a computer science uh, background, if you have a computer science background, you don't necessarily approach problems um, that way, or at least in statistics, at least as far as I know. So maybe that's why this paradigm is not 
as popular it's getting popular it's getting more and more popular but i think if you have a more mathy background economics background or something like that i think this paradigm will speak much more to you than uh, than loops loops are very weird to me because you learn you, you never really learn in math to think in terms of loops right but in terms of, of operators of vectors and using other functions that you map over them and you project this these vectors to this uh, to this vector space there and and you yeah I mean that's that's in general how you you learn about these things and uh, I, I feel like the functional paradigm just is a translation an almost one-to-one -one translation of this more um, functional view or you know functional approach that you have in math to uh, to programming so at least for me it's really something that I, I really enjoy and I also find it much simpler because you just have to reason about your functions with um, the most simple case in mind. You no only need to keep the simplest case in mind and then you just use map or reduce depending on what you want to do or map to uh, or pmap, which is a generalization of map to. So if you add three uh, vectors instead of two, you would use pmap. And, um, and yeah, it makes things much easier in my view. So um, I hope you enjoyed and uh, well, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. But I think maybe I'll do another video before the end of the year, but if not, Merry Christmas.